Ravens on the counter index, though. Yes, it looks like they went on the counter index, but keep in mind, early to mid game goes over to Blacklist International, and even late game potentially can be very scary. Right now, RQ Akira want to play towards that goal lane, and if they have the options to play around neutrals, they will try, but it's not their main focus. All right, here we go. Game number two, match point for the Code Breakers as they execute. End game protocol, picking up some signature heroes, paying homage to the queen. Rena J with the Estes. Who would have thought on day two we would have seen this? Let's get into the land of dawn. Check out these early rotations. It's a purple start for Sensui, the opposite for King. Interesting. So they want to end up on the opposite sides of the map at the very least. And, uh, well, sorry, the same sides of the map. But at the very least, we need to understand a couple of things, right? Number one, if we are expecting the new... Oh, say it. Hello, say it, say it. Okay, buddy, as you were saying. Uh, very similar as first game. Yeah. Heart, heart, heart stopping. Heart stopping, <laughs> really, truly. I think at the very least, we're expecting, in terms of the quote unquote, the EXP laners, Edward is always going to be able to make it to the neutrals faster than Takashi. It's just a matter of fact sort of situation, right? So RRQ Akira needs to add that into their calculations and really protect the gold lane. It is the skin, by the way, right? So, oh, there it is, yes! Yeah, there it is. Uh, and it's funny, too, because as you talk about the gold lane here, uh, Gideon, you know, you also mentioned even the Ube back in what, it was M3 you mentioned, so now still, Ube gonna be the play here for this game, and even looking at the emblems, you can see they mean business. Mm -hmm. They mean a lot of business as well. Fighter emblems coming from Benedetta, atypical, impure rages, coming all around for the side of Blacklist International and Takashi having, I mean, he's on the grok. He needs this weapon master to really, to really kind of step up and maintain control over that wafer, at the very least minimize the time he stays in it. What I'm excited for is eventually what items these two teams build. If the Benedetta will be very different from the way Takash built it, uh, what kind of grok we're going to be seeing in the hands of Astro Thunder, and how they're prepping up for this first turtle, by the way. About five seconds from now, Blacks International, small lead, two minutes in. In case anybody was wondering when Blacklist International skin came out, uh, quickly post that on screen. Every single time it happens, I'm gonna mention it. But for now, at least, Takashi, he's gonna hit level four, which is great, but Sagan isn't level four. So they're exactly where they wanna be here. Again, gonna force just King out. Even with the Electo final blow, Luis gonna jump Get in, in with a guiding win. Takashi looking for his own entry point, holding on to that wild charge. Whoa. King, though, will get the turtle. A good choice of position there for RQ Akira. Oh. Oh. Almost, but it was Edward that also went down in that exchange. Oh, okay, okay. Battle spells are already coming out here. Things are looking much better for RRQ Akira at the very least. I mean, Renegade is here to top him back up so that Oheb can stay in lane, but here comes Sagan and Louise. The flank! They're here. Oheb gonna dodge that shot, so he should be fine. Gonna have the heal as well. Bang! Okay, torn apart memory, not gonna find the mark. Mm -hmm. Tether's gonna keep him topped up, but even Renegade is running out of mana at this point. So again, Blacklist International, as the mid lane is under control, RRQ Akira putting a lot of focus down uh, and reinforcing the gold. But even so, these neutral objectives, right, it should have fallen into the hands of Blacklist International, but unfortunately they weren't able to fully reset this turtle. Small mistakes, not that big of a deal. At the end of the day, Blacklist International, with or without the turtle, really makes no difference. That's interesting. Looking at the gold earned, <laughs> Tekash on top, that means he hasn't missed a single wave, and he's been hitting on Q. Wow. Oh, 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 Hasn't oh. really moved. Now Sensui playing footsies with King. Renegade going to be healing him up. Oh, it's not going to bring out into a full-on fight. Yeah, just making their way up here. You can see a lot of the focus, though, once again, where they want to on that gold lane, like Gideon mentioned earlier. This is crucial for oh. both teams here. So certainly going to be used by Luis. But they just pull back for now. Once again, we're still 30 seconds away from that turtle. Mm. But why, though? But why would you want to go for the Circle of the Eagle in moments like this? Like, I, I guess it's just to open up the map. And I think Takashi, at the very least, yes, proxy that wave. Keep Edward stuck in that lane for as long as possible. Get that information about how many jungle creeps are still available down on that bottom side. Relay it back to your jungle and keep control over this top. Six more seconds until that turtle. And I think this time, our RQ Akira. Wow. Okay. Oh. 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 Well, the whole team. Here for this one right now, once again, both gold laners going to uh, this other side of the map. So they're going to find a work around it. But if RQ Akira can secure themselves to the second turtle, they're going to be on their way 
to a better position than they were in the previous game, and right now they're after it. Whoa. So, Black is international. How's the answer? King going to be able to secure the turtle, and they disengage after it. They make the right choice. RQ Akira now gets the next objective. Okay, it's RQ Akira this time around playing the game of inches. They're not going to force the issue, not going to go for big wins. Instead, they'll take turtle after turtle, win these lanes, and then eventually, when are we looking for them to get the payoff away, Gusta? Gusta going to uh -oh. be in trouble here. Whittled down and taken down easily for Yue. Putting them on the board. So caught again. This is kind of what we expect here with this lineup from Blacklist. Mm -hmm. There's your answer, Leo. That's exactly what they wanted to do. Catch him off that rotation and make sure that once Oheb gets his very first item, then he's ready to rumble. More importantly so, right? Keep in mind that at least with King, he does have an inbuilt clan. So every time you see Edward trying to go for that, you know, electo final blow into Petrify, it's not necessarily effective, but it does force out the heavy spin. I mean, in a combat situation, yes. But look at the map. Blacks International finding these windows, finding their angles, pushing bottom lane in. So already oh. the King of Kings' is map, very small. Oheb farming up using that real estate. Look at that. 4K at six. Yeah, they're doing well at taking some of the some of uh, well, not really No Man's Land's POIs like River Crab, but also getting small invades, taking away Kerbalts, taking away Beetles at the same time. And I think a lot of it is just just well done. Oheb is just very efficient at what he does, and Yue is doing a good job at making sure that Sagan is a little late on that rotate, and even if he does rotate late, he's losing out on EXP. Thus why we see the EXP difference between Yue and Sagan. Oh, KL1 is eating good. Look at that, almost a thousand ahead. Sensui catches a face full of CC from these two chunky boys up top. Sensui wants to engage. So Takashi. Quite tanky himself, should be just fine. Oh. Waiting for the rest of the team. He gets whittled down quite a bit though, but Sagan has an answer of his own. But that's the thing. Rena J there to heal oh. him up. And now a third turtle of the game for the taking. Oh. So Luis gonna go in, circling Eel Yue. Already taking the brunt of damage, gonna oh. get shot down by Sagan. Still gonna fight it down. Heavy spin used. King gets the third turtle. Oh. Still gonna fight it out. The wild charge comes through. Edward has to get out of there. But Oheb to answer finds the kill on Takashi. Nicely played by RQ Akira. They force Yue to use the Purify as well as the Black Shoes to pull him out of position. But Takashi, oh, uh, he's so greedy. He's like, one more, one power in nature. <laughs> Just give me that kill over Edward. Let me hold it above his head. All right, say what you will about that, biting him in the behind. But something tells me RQ Akira have to go that fast, have to be just a little greedy. Because come the mid game, uh, and we're fast approaching, by the way, folks, despite being a zero and three on Turtles, I think Blacks International has a great future in them. And when I say future, I'm saying maybe two minutes in because looking at that last engagement for that last Turtle fight, you have to admit, mana is life and life is mana. As long as Renegade has mana and his skills are on cooldown, RQ can have to think about how to use their kit very, very specifically. And that's why Sagan feels like he's so neutered in this game. It's like, oh yeah, I hit the nastiest skill shot from the longest range possible. Renegade is like, what? That, feel that. <laughs> that did what? That did what? Did it happen? Nah, don't worry, it's just a scratch. It's just a flesh wound. That's one of the strengths though here, and now uh -oh. the focus. Once again, the landing shot, but UA gonna be healed back up. Gusta Lagusta also picking up that Malefic Roar, so they hold it together here. But RQ Akira needs to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in a lot of these team fights and skirmishes. Yeah, and so far still, you see RQ Akira getting big wins, but it's not converting into real estate. Nothing on the map is going their way. Oh. King trying to pull something off of there. Already using the heavy spin. Now he's going to be the focus. RQ Akira trying to hold on to this tier one in the top lane. This is actually kind of interesting. I feel like RQ Akira are, are getting a little creative with this, right? There is a possible angle where they're able to use the Circling Eagle Guiding Winds to pull King into a back position and use the heavy spin to push them outside of the turret range. It's a, it's a radical idea, but I don't know. It's going to need a little bit of testing from RQ Akira to find the moment to do so. Yep, here we see nine minutes in. Lord spawning in the lower quarter. Looking at the item game, still Oheb, a thousand gold ahead. Takash fails to cancel the recall. What's the item game looking like here? Heptasis, Malefic Roar, Hosclaws, the Fury already onto Oheb. Oh yeah, and again, key pick up here for Yue. 
the coin's wand. Oh man, I've missed seeing Oheb on an international stage. Just to see him, you blink one second and he's already a thousand gold up, man. <laughs> and he maintains it somehow. Let's see if they can once again play around this objective. RQ Akira knew what they had to do going to game two. Oh. They've done an outstanding job still. Can they pull this one off? Louis is going to use that circling eagle. They're trying to lure, lure Blacklist International towards this side of the map. They got to watch out for Edward as well, looking for his own angle. Everyone is visible. Save for Oheb, he shows himself. All right, everyone is still visible. The statement still stands. I don't know where this dance is going, by the way. Both of them are willing to crack, I think. I think both sides actually want to team fight pretty hard, but Renegade mm -hmm. is being protected from all angles, and I think RQ want to force out his ult. Oh, they don't know where Abu Jinjing is. The Echo spots out three, make that four. They don't know where Edward is. Yeah, they're going to watch out for Edward. He's hugging this side here, looking for his own entry point. He's going to pour, force oh! him back, Edward. Trying to focus him down, already using the Electo final blow. Gusa Lagusa, though, wants to kill the heroes are there. King gets the Lord, and they're going to run for the base. Gusa Lagusa is going to fall, but RQ Akira gets the objective. Whew, okay. All right, I, oh boy, a lot of things are going on in that particular fight. And I think at the end of the day, just well done to King. Despite the chaos and madness, was still able to secure the Lord for themselves. But keep in mind, Oheb, look at him just chunk out these turrets. All right, they're going to get the uh, defense on tier one in mid. But I got to say again, Blacklist International so good on the turn. Something tells me they don't mind losing out on the level one Lord. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's not luminous. It doesn't have the added charge to guaranteed structures. And still, without even without the charge, Edward is still finding places on the map to squeeze himself in to milk the gold out of RRQ and Kira, Kira's structure. Oh, no. He, no, he should be okay, King. right? Yeah, he should be fine. Yeah, he's quite tanking himself. But they're going to throw a lot here, trying to get that mid turret down. But still, Edward doing his own work. This oh, is what he loves no. to do. Come on. Thumbs up, gives it to him, gets the turret. An electo final blows to safety. He's just fine. Abun Jingjing wails away, cracks that tier two up top with impunity. No one could tell him anything. Yeah, Mr. Papadopoulos was able to find our RQ Akira slacking. All these motions and movements, he's starting to get to RQ Akira's head, right? They gotta calm down. They really have to assess the situation. They start over committing. That's when Blacklist finds the holes to get that gold in their pockets. Because before this, it was two to two, dead even. 500 gold difference. Now it's 1.7k only because they were caught slacking. Yep. Something tells me Araki Okira is holding out for one more big ticket moment. The clutch that they're looking for, that ramp up, they'll get more aggressive when Takash says yes, when Takash says go. Takash has to hide in these bushes way better. He has to get that flicker while charge more consistently. Oh, this could be his moment. He's actually looking oh. for it here. They're gonna press the go. <gasps> But they're going to get whittled down here already. King being stopped in his tracks. Meanwhile, Edward pushing the top side. RQ Akira, they've got to go answer to this. Okay, they at least respect the fact that they know the purifies are up. If they pulled the trigger and forced it, they would have just bumped into Blacks International, they would have healed and then punished. So at least they know that. I mean, the most that they would get is probably Oheb, since he's the only one without the Purify. He's just confident that he can get out of every situation regardless. But I think that at least for the side of RRQ Akira, it's starting to get a bit uncomfortable for them because they need their entire composition to be together to actually make something happen. Blacklist International are totally fine playing four and one here because remember, Benedetta is just so much faster on the rotation compared to Takashi's Grok. Dare I say, it can be 3 on one It's Renege and the other two. The other two elsewhere splitting up. It's just Renege plus plus. Doesn't matter. He's the heel man. <laughs> He's now the heel man. From hit man to heel man. And working for this lore now. Once again, like we saw previously, Blacklist International, they were fine even losing that first lord, but this one they're going to want to fight. They're going to want to force RQ, to, RQ Akira to dance here, and that's exactly what they do. Multiple anti-heal items also for RQ Akira could help turn the tide of the fight. Lord Dance already initiated. Blacklist with a slight advantage. Sensui with the pull and the hard reset by Takash. Nicely done coming in from Takashi. Keep in mind, King is a level ahead of Sensui, so generally it's in his advantage, but they gotta be careful, right? They gotta make sure that they're cleaning up these waves because Blacklist International are gonna keep pulling them apart. Look, Edward on the bottom side. Oh, whoa. Hey. Oh, they're gonna try to sandwich them off here in the mid lane. Yue 
gets the heal through. Whoa. King gonna use the heavy spin. He's gonna lock down Reje, but where's the follow-up? They couldn't get it in time. Now Takashi goes in with wild charge, but he's gonna get cut off from the team. Has to flicker out. Everything thrown here, and Black International has the go for the Lord. All right, good news for our Kyokira. Louise inside can still have their flicker, but bad news is Black International makes a beeline for the Lord. They're blitzing this. That right there is just going to be a free Lord here for Black International at this point, and we'll see how they march into the base of RQ Akira. Again, they have work to do. RQ Akira trying to hold down as much as they can in the mid lane, but what can they do with this pressure from Blacklist International? I think that RQ Akira, they need to, I mean, besides the fact that they need to clean up some of their wave management overall, I'm actually quite proud of them. The fact that they've been able to hold on this long in this particular manner against Blacklist International, of all teams out there, their big plateau that they've been trying to take over since M3. But in the meantime, I think the only way that they're going to be able to get ahead is if they can bait out that alt coming in from Renegade, force him to use it like they did just now. I mean, everything was going going well for them. They were getting everything except they were getting stat checked and the waves weren't in their favor. If you revert back time, if we had cleaner waves and we had the exact same execution, maybe RRQ Akira might have been able to bounce back. We're looking at 16 minutes game time. Black International about 5,000 gold ahead. All waves crashing in, synchronized, orchestrated masterfully by the House of Black. They pull through up top. Louis very oh. low. Edward already using that electo final blow. They still have to deal with the Lord here in the base of RQ Akira. Most likely will lose the second turret as they do in the bottom side, holding on to that mid lane base turret. Oh, the only one left. The main artery that RQ Akira has to protect. Long lane, dead lane. Blacks International is going to have the Lord dances of their lives. It's so much easier for them to get this Lord coming up in a minute and a half. But something tells me our reckon gentlemen might not even get there because Blacklist, they want to push in. They're going to push it in into the base. RQ Akira trying to hold it down. They're trying their best. They keep them at bay. And with that, they stay in this game a little bit longer. That was very, very nice coming in from RQ Akira. Very, very nice indeed. Just si nicely, nice movement coming in from Gusta. Lagusta getting out of the way from the bed, from, especially from the Electo Final Blow, right? Which is the main engage tool for Blacklist International at the end of the day, other than Sensui. But for the most part, you don't want Sensui to be that far forward, and more so that he gets split off. You don't want your front line to get split up from your back line, which is what King has been trying to do this entire game. He's gotten close, but not there, not almost there, you know, not there just yet. Okay, the fact that we're looking at three and two at about 17 and a half minutes mm -hmm. means RQ Akira aren't forcing anything. They're letting these battle spells and these ults do the work for them, and they're paying the price on map real estate, on space, partly on farm, you know, 6K is a pretty yeah. hefty gap between you and your opponent, but at least you're not losing immediately. You're still in this. You've extended the game to a point wherein you can learn, you can adjust, and you can force out these engages. And to be fair, I think this Lord, it's not as 100% the blacklist as it could be, but wait, they're engaging. Luis gonna go with that circling eagle. Sensui was looking for his oh. own entry point. Has to respect the damage though. Coming out from Gusa Lagusta, now Lord gonna spawn here as they get a situated. Still Edward putting the pressure on the bottom side. No, uh, RQ and Kira have to get ahead of the game right now. They need to start proxying these waves as soon as possible. It, it, all these waves are gonna be coming in from every single side, and if they don't get a, a solid grip on the management, it's going to be a problem, right? As long as Takashi is relaying the information on what exactly, uh, what exactly Edward is doing. <laughs> RQ Akira might okay. be able to make it happen. Oh, whoa, okay, that, that's interesting. He to, oh, he's actually so low! He's playing with uh, with a little danger here. He still has the Black Shoes and the Purify, so we'll get healed back up. RQ Akira, though, wants to put the pressure on Sensui. They're going to find the lockdown with a heavy spin. There's the heal, though, Bang. but they get the kill. King able to get it in. Takashi goes in with a wild charge, but they still have to turn the tide. Edward leading the front. They're gonna back off for now. RQ oh. Akira still looking for more. They're happy with Sensui down, but they gotta manage the waves as well into the base. Oh. So many ults spent, so many battle spells spent for taking down one key hero. And they can't even capitalize because again, as you mentioned, Joseph, they had to send people back home. Uh, it, it, to me, I think it's totally worth it here. This is the first mistake we actually see coming out for Black Loose International. And now, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh. Oheb also in the front of the side here, still dealing with it. Takashi comes to join Edward though, holding on with that immortality as well. 
They're buying so much time, waiting for Sensua to get back for this. Once again, oh! Luis with the circling eagle. They'll find Yue. Now Renage there. King can't find the lockdown on Ohed just yet. Whoa! Finds him in the corner. Shot's not going to land. He still has the immortality. They have to work for it. Immortality finally hey. popped. Takashi looking for the follow-up. It's only King still waiting for it. But he's going to be whittled oh! down. Whoa! Guiding whip out. <laughs> what a save from Luis. The Brazilian Express from Manila to Rio de Janeiro. He saved King. Oh my God. I thought Takashi messed up there, but no, all part of the plan. Oh, you and Kira are here to play. Oh, Edward's not done though. Edward's still keeping him at bay. And this is going to be a Lord for Blacklist International. Aren't you and Kira? They're going to have to recuperate here and wait for Gusta Lagusta to get up to defend the base to stay in this series. The long con, amazing situational awareness with Blacks International. You can mess up the pieces, but you can't beat the master plan. Amazing recovery from Blacklist, despite having noticed, if I'm not mistaken, the longest guiding wins I've seen in quite a while. They still have their eyes on the prize. Amazing Lord pickup, an evolved Lord scored by Black. They're gonna go ahead and zone out Sensui here with Whoa. the wild charge as well. Immortality gonna be popped, but Red and Oheb here. They wanna get back to the base. Edward trying to cut them off, focusing on Gusa Lagusta. Has an immortality of his own. Lord now making its way down the midside as well. RQ Akira trying to hold it all together here. They're gonna clear the waves. Immortality from Edward already popped. Still working for it. Takashi keeps them at bay. Sensui falls oh, toward a fourth oh, memory. Oh no. Goes through. It's a double for Gusa Lagusta. Oh. The shot can land. Luis goes in, but they're dull. It's a disaster for him as he gets taken down. But they stay in the game. RQ Akira with a defense. Overheat. Overheat. Blacks International could have ended right then and there. But RQ Akira took down the minions, attacked the Lord, and believed in whatever's out there and said, you know what, we're not gonna go down like this. Not here, not now. Here's the instant replay. I, I could have sworn that was it. I could have sworn there was like a minion here, a minion there, and the Lord, I guess they were out of range. I mean, look at it, right? All of it, all of it boils down to, does Rena J have his alt? That's all it boils down. And if we're thinking, hey, Blacklist, they're the ones who overheated. Guess what? RQ and Kira do the same. They feel the exact same way. I'm an empath. Of course I know. Whew. Okay, to be fair, it's off of the back of Luis's call. Whoa. And he believes there was enough damage remaining from those who were ready to take it. And I guess that's where it all crumbled. That's a clear sign of overheating. So now we got a moment to breathe. We can digest what just went down. I gotta be honest, still looking great for RQ Akira. They've yet to crack anything from Blacklist. Of course, they're not cracking anything off of Blacklist, but you can see that the ideas and the execution is becoming cleaner and cleaner as the game goes by. And strangely enough, Blacklist International finally getting punished for some of their mistakes. For an example, when we saw by that very uh, third, no, second Lord, we did see Yue actually get chunked out, forcing Renegade to have to move away from Sensui to cover his butt and make sure that he's topped up. Instantly, we see RRQ Akira jump onto Sensui, and that's what started this bounce back from RRQ Akira. And so far, RRQ Akira have been getting better, right? Yep. We, we mentioned this, what, at the 16, 17 minute mark. Hey, they're learning. They're figuring out how to actually isolate members of Black from this Uber recoded, this Uber as it's known locally. I'm wondering what's next. I guess people have to stop overheating and I have to admit, RRQ Akira is just outnumbered. You see, you see, the, you see, you see the agents on the stands? It's a I, lot of agents out there. It's going to be a very, very silent haul if RRQ Akira win this. And I, I think I think that at the very least, when we're looking at the game as a whole, right, with some of the sloppy mistakes that happen, well, not really sloppy mistakes, but just like the general housekeeping, you know? You let yeah. the dust build up inside the corner and all of a sudden it's a, it's a hornet's nest, right? <laughs> that, that's, that's, it's the that's worst case extreme. scenario. <laughs> that's worst case scenario. But you get the idea. These things start very, very small and build up very, very quickly, which this is how Blacklist are able to etch out wins and get some of the best teams in the world. They catch you slacking. They catch you throwing, you know, taking your spare change ever so slightly, and then it eventually builds up. I think that at least for RRQ Akira, the X 
execution has kind of, you know, been minimized compared to game number one. But if they want to win this game, they can get Renegade to use his ult super early on and find a way to at least forcefully take Sensui away from that fight. There's an opportunity. And, well, keep in mind that big target, that hit marker, it's not just Sensui. If they can get Oheb, that might just be game over. Well, JC Sumandal says it's game. Indeed, it is game. The mandate of the King of Kings say, get the ult off of the Hitman, get those purifies off, and then we're talking business. And with that, we're 30 seconds away from this next Lord here. So RQ Akira, you gotta give props to them. They've done a great job. Their base has been exposed for a while, but they're staying in this game. And now we get to the point of this game where, you know, immortality start to play a role, Wind of Natures, the item jungling and everything else between Whoa. both these teams. Look at the real-time win rate. All right, 75-25, that's pretty reasonable. Oh that's not bad. All right, can I just say, I I'm surprised. The gold lead just shrank, like, a in a snap. Yeah. Down to 700. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's honestly not as bad as it seems, other than the fact that the structures are missing and they don't have any inhibitors. But <laughs> considering that, you know, Louise is very clearly subscribed to Grab uh, Unlimited, he is saving his members time and time again. Whoa. He's got that super app. He's got the super, got the super app. Anything you need, man. Anything you need. Shields, oh. heals. Wait a second. Positioning. Hold up. Hold damage, up. he has a good amount of wisps. He's got a good amount of wisps, but Sagan is really starting to double up on the damage compared to everybody else. The poke is actually putting in a good amount of work. And not to mention the Goose and the Goose. Oh, oh whoa, whoa, whoa! Edward could be in trouble here. Oh. Gets away fine, though. Torn Apart Memory was going to be used as well. No! Oh. Dodging that shot as well. He backs off, trying to get back to base. Close. But RQ Akira did it. This is what they wanted. They wanted this positioning <laughs> for this Lord. At least start it up. Black International, though, still here, healing back up with the heal man. And Luis taking a brunt of damage himself. Okay, they need to go for the pull this time around. Especially since previously, Gusta Lagusta, they know where he was. Big Astral Echoes there. Spots three, maybe four. Oheb protects his position. All right, here we go. RQ Akira finally able to pull the Lord out. Uh, this, this has got to be really annoying for RQ Akira, right? They want to play a standard game, but they always have to do the housekeeping every single time. Chores, 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 chores. Blacklist International can patiently wait it out. It's not, the onus is not on Blacklist International to do anything here. And if RQ Akira really want to start rolling the or dice, I'm confident Sensui is probably going to win that out, especially considering that at least the Grok, he needs to be nearby. But at the same time, you got to clear that bot side. And not only with that again, Luis Hello. to go in with a circling eagle, keeping them at bay, still dancing up for this Lord here. It's about half health. RQ Akira finding it very difficult to find this own positioning uh -oh. to favor them. Black International knows that they're whittled down a little bit. They don't have as much heal as they do. Oh no. So Edward gonna force them back towards that side. Sagan gonna look at the damage there. They gotta respect it, UA. Holding down that mid. Man, if somebody is going to make TikTok... Whoa! Oh, okay, no, 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 no. They're not going to completely commit to this, right? They're not. They're not. Okay, they're going to back off. Thank goodness. Because if anybody's going to make TikTok content, you should see how quickly Blacklist International make that decision. They all of a sudden, they see Sagan on that top side. Let's start taking space. Sagan disappears. They start giving away space. And slowly but surely, RQ here have guarded up by the lead. A uh, thousand gold ahead already. 26 minutes in. The patience between these two teams, faded as they are to face off against each other year after year after year in the M series. It's coming down to this, the fact that we might see a game three because RQ here have been learning. They've been figuring it out and they've been taking care of their lanes, their waves. Real talk, boys. At what point do you start screaming into your secret lab chair, hoping that something is going to happen? Because I don't have the patience, and that's why I'm not a pro. It could be here again. Edward jumping in the backside. Lord, a fourth of the health. Ooh. Louise goes in. Oheb going to get pushed back. Sensui also half health. Torn apart memory already going to be used. Still whittling it down. Yue holding the front line and healed back up through Renegade. Lord resets again. Drats. Foiled again. Both teams holding on. And again, the patience from both of them. They both know. They both are championship caliber world class athletes. They know that patience is what holds you down. What changes the fact that you're still here and you're not losing. But wait, King holding oh, this, go, this go. push. They're trying to cut them off here. King could no. be in trouble. Heavy spin still has the immortality. Lord 
Is he gonna go for another reset? Both teams still respecting the damage possible here. It's whittled down, it's gonna come yeah. down! Setsui gets the Lord, wins the red tree battle. Now Luis on the run alongside King. They have to get back to the base. They have to get ready for this defense. That's a fumble. That's a fumble if I've ever seen one. Uh, the problem is that the fumble happened so far away, right? Luis overextends, uses the circling eagle, jumps toward where King was hiding, forcing him to use the heavy spin. That was his only way to keep himself uh, keep himself clean from CC. Something tells me it was Blacklist International's initiative as well to let King and Luis take that long bush down bottom to position them for the perfect. Something tells me they, they manufactured the fumble. They manufactured the fumble. I mean, I I gotta hear, I gotta hear some mic checks to know <laughs> that for sure. It's all theoretical, but well played so far for Black Lucy International as RQ are on the defense. They have to stay in the game and oh, no! you jump in right on Goose the Goose, forcing the wind of nature. Lord gonna be half to help, they have to work it out. King using heavy spin. Can RQ stay in for this? This game, Torn Apart Memory gonna be used again, Luis gonna fall, base going down, the code is strong as Blacklist International sweeps the series. History repeats itself as a Blacklist International once again defeats RRQ Akira in tonight's closer. Oh man, as Blacklist International walk off the stage, at least RRQ Akira have left an impression. I'm not seeing too many smiles up there. It definitely shows that the rest of the world is slowly watching and creeping up on Southeast Asia. Hey, if you're able to take Blacklist close to 30 minutes, you're doing something right. You pushed them to their limits. You made them have to figure out a way to make that Lord Dance go that way. And look at this, the show of sportsmanship between these two teams. Hey, I face after year after year after year. They've evolved, look at that. <laughs> Louise, man. Love to see it, man. Again, sportsmanship here. And like you guys mentioned, there was massive improvement this time around for game two, right? You're looking at game one, you look at game two. This was quick learning, quick adjustment from RQ Akira. Hats off to them for staying in that game, even with an exposed base for so long. We'll see how that kind of transitions for the rest of their matches throughout the group stage here. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing that RRQ Akira can really hold themselves accountable to is not the overall gameplay that they had in game number two, was the fact that game number one went in that particular fashion because what? It felt like they were hiding.